color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Rachel Wells has received a gift from Dr. Michael Rossi, a puppy, a gift one usually gives to a child. She also received a lecture from the doctor, a blunt statement telling her not to misinterpret the gift. The doctor told her that she'd been playing hide and seek with her own maturity, that one minute she was a child, the next a woman. To Rachel, the doctor's words were inaccurate, for ever since she met Dr. Rossi and Rodney Harrington, she has felt like a woman. Hello. Hi. Why don't you come in out of the cold? All right. That was very nice of Dr. Rossi to give you the puppy. What's his name? I just call him Puppy. Didn't Dr. Rossi have any suggestions? No, he didn't. I guess I have to go now. Oh, wait a minute. Can't you stay and have some coffee with me? All right. Sit down. Thank you. And here's some cream. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was thinking what, that maybe one of these cold winter nights, you and I and Norman and Rita, we could go over to the shoreline. Where's the shoreline? Oh, it's just outside of town. And we'd all go there together? Mm-hmm. Just the four of us. A double date happens all the time. Not to me. Oh, I keep forgetting you're from another world. Let me have the puppy. Puppy, for you. Hastings Valley is another world. At least the part I come from, anyway. What happens at this shoreline? Oh, it's just a place where kids go and dance, got a jukebox, big Friday night bit. I don't know the big Friday night bit. Oh, you'll learn. As a matter of fact, I owe you a frug lesson for that uh, short course in square dancing you gave me the other night. <laughs> well, at least it was short. Oh, but I'm not saying it wasn't fun, mind you. Mm -hmm. May I have a little more coffee? Go right ahead. But it's not what people are doing, is it? Well, not exactly. Rachel, when would be a good night for you? Rodney, I'd feel out of place at this shoreline. As out of place as, well, a patchwork quilt in your grandfather's front parlor. Why are you laughing? At you calling my grandfather's living room a front parlor. It's kind of quaint. I'm kind of quaint, I guess. I don't know all those dances, and I don't know how to make small talk. I can teach you. Why? Why? There are a lot of girls who know. Why teach me? Stay there. I like to teach. Dancing? Rachel. There are a lot of things that I'm not ready to learn about. What do you think I'm going to do to you? Lead you down the primrose path? Don't get angry. Well, I... You know what a primrose path is? I've heard tell. Well, what about it? I like... I like you. Oh, well, that, that's something. It is to me. Well, it is to me, too. But you're not serious. About what? About me. About everything. What do you want me to say to you? You want me to say that, that uh, you want me to make a speech about my undying love and how I'll cherish you forever? I can't keep up with you. 
I can slow down. For how long? For as long as I have to. Are you sure? Try me. Did Allison? You're not Allison. What, Rachel, what do you want, a big brother? No. What? You've been married. You know what I've been trying to say to you. What, that I'm a big boy? No, you're a man. That's right, I'm a man and you're a woman. And a man is capable of taking a woman out on a date and respecting her. Do you understand me? A kiss at the door would be enough. It can be. Coming from you. Now, oh, Rich, I have to be honest with you. I don't know what's enough for me. I can't make any promises. I need your promises now. I'll see you, Rachel. Bye, Rodney. Up a new puppy toy. Things been going all right for you, Rachel? Fine. Carson's been treating you all right? What do they think about you and this Rodney Harrington? There's nothing for them to think. I just saw you coming out of the garage. Oh, I'm uh, I'm not following you around. I'm on a split shift today. I, I got a new job at the mill. I've got to go now. I'm glad to see you find someone of your own age. It's time you found a boyfriend. This Rod, well, he he may have a, you know, a free and easy life, but... Who are you to tell me how a boy should behave after what happened the day of Aunt Lucy's funeral? Oh, you, you just got frightened, Rachel. You misunderstood. Did I? I was only trying to comfort you. You just lost your auntie. <laughs> you tamed down, Rachel. You've forgotten what a wild girl you were. Take your hands off. Don't ever touch me again. And don't talk to me again, either. Who gave you that puppy dog, Rachel? Young Rodney? Or your doctor friend? I'll see you fellas later. Habit. Reading the paper at the table. Well, in the interest of the amenities. <laughs> it's interesting watching people adjust to new circumstances. Perhaps if you had a new set of house rules printed and placed over the mantelpiece. No reading at the table, no talking before the servants. What else I'm really very anxious to learn. I never attempt to substitute sarcasm for self-assurance. I believe that's the basic rule, Stephen. It's quite possible to disguise a sow's ear as a silk purse. But once the creature cries oink, the whole world knows its origins. Yes, well, I'm afraid mine are already well advertised, Grandfather. Uh, anyone uh, ready for coffee? Mm, I'll have a cup. Betty, did I mention last night that Thomas had given me his notice? No, when is he leaving? As soon as he can be replaced. <laughs> With a subtle hint that the search takes out over two weeks, or I'd be interfering with his wedding plans. At any rate, I need a new chauffeur. Oh, Stephen, I was wondering if you could stop by the Clarion this morning. Put an ad in the paper, using any wording you wish, 
But making it clear that I need a good man at Motors and will pay appropriately. Oh, why not phone it in? It's on your way to the office. Um, I'll take care of it. I have some other errands in town. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I won't be able to spare you, Betty. You and I will be driving to Boston this morning. I didn't even know you were going. I have an appointment with Wainwright and Kennedy. While I'm with the lawyers, you can amuse yourself shopping. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to place that ad before I see Mr. Tomlinson at the bank. Oh, then the luncheon was a success. Betty, you've arrived. With Mrs. Tomlinson's stamp of approval, no bridge luncheon in Peyton Place will be complete without your presence. Goodbye. See you tonight. Well, if we're going to Boston, I'd better get ready. Do I detect a note of maternal protectiveness? Not maternal, wifely. You work very nice. Oh, Betty, I've been doing Stephen no favors, catering to his insecurities. You don't have to stab at them. Bill's character. Betty, I have a higher opinion of Stephen than you think. You don't show it. I intend to, in my own way. Come with me. But not with hypocritical praise nor insincere flatteries. Betty, I've gone along with you up till now with your redecorating plans. But I intend to reject one suggestion. The landscape over the mantel. The space over the fireplace is uh, the focal point of the room. And whatever goes there should command the eye, don't you agree? This is your home, Mr. Payton. You can do whatever you like. Ah, oh, but my home has a new and very lovely young mistress. I can think of no finer compliment to Stephen than a portrait of her. No. Hanging where it right fit it belongs, over the fireplace. Betty, you told me when I was in the hospital that the best thing that ever happened to this house was the fire. But destroying the past isn't enough. Something must replace it. I don't think Stephen would like the idea. Oh, why shouldn't he? Can you think of anything else that would make him feel more as if this were truly his home? I'll talk to him about it. No, no. I intend this is a birthday surprise for Stephen. I'll make the arrangements at the Art Institute this afternoon while we're in Boston. Timeo dana os et dona ferentis. I fear the Greeks even when they bring gifts. Especially when they bring gifts. I'm afraid that's going to be Stephen's attitude. I hope not. I intend this as a, well, as a symbol, if you like, of a brighter future for all of us. You're Stephen's wife, and you're all the things his mother might have been. The promise Catherine didn't live up to. But you're more than that, Betty. You're my granddaughter. The tragedy of life is that by the time we learn from our mistakes, it's too late to correct them. And all old men dream of a second chance. Will you consent to the portrait? All right. Thank you. Now, run up and get dressed. Thomas will be ready with the car in a few moments. <laughs> 